Coach, you mentioned uh, after the, the game Saturday, you wanted to kind of see the tape before you kind of talked about some of the young guys that got to get in. Uh, what did you see on that tape from some of the, the young players who maybe stood out? Well, I think what stood out the most was our second offensive line. They were actually, when we, when we talked about the game this morning, they were our offensive players of the game. You know, Rod Talavea, uh, Devin Kalaney, Brock Dew, uh, Christie, there's no doubt he had his best game sliding inside. Uh, Ashton Tripp and Luke Roten did some really good things. And they created space. It wasn't against a different defense than the ones went against. It was the same scheme. So it was an attitude. It was a mindset. And Dylan Payne was another guy that just really stood out of playing his tail off, working hard. Uh, Zion Nunley made a big play down the field. John Matier, I thought, was exceptionally sharp and showed what he's capable of as he continues to grow. Uh, and then defensively, it just, as we went, we just got a little bit sloppy with some of those young guys, you know, so communications and a lot of learns. And fortunately, though, they got game experience because at some point, Reese is going to be out there and Boogie's going to be out there and Tariq's going to be out there. And we need that experience, um, you know, Bobby Terrell. So all those guys, I think they got an opportunity. It was it was huge. And, and they're no longer freshmen, so to speak. And there's a couple of guys we're just laughing in the weight room. I mean, you're a Pac-12 player. You can never take it away from you. You know, and you go out there and you earned it. And I, I thought that was the best part of, of watching it again. Kyle Thornton was the last guy to come off the, the field of the starting defense. Um, and I joked with him after uh, the game, if he just maybe made you guys mad or something. And you, you had to leave him out there a little longer. But how hard was it to pull a guy like KT off when you know he just wants to play every single snap? Yeah, there was a couple things. A, his versatility because he's playing Will and Mike. And we did want to get him a couple extra reps at Mike that he hasn't played too much this season. Josh Erling was down, who's the backup Mike. Uh, before we got to Huddy, we wanted to see KT get a little extra run there. So that's all that was about. And the best part is he's like, bring it on. Let's go play the game. I love doing it because I've sat on the sidelines long enough. Let's go play. So he's just got a great attitude about it. Just talk about that a little bit, maybe how he kind of rubs off on some of the other guys. You know, you get a guy like that who, again, you do, he doesn't want to come out of the game. He said himself, he just loves to play football. Well, I think if you just – if you can find something where you can harness that – energy that want to that makeup that heart that passion and if we could sell it we'd all be really rich you know and if we had a team 125 of it it would be special uh uniquely that's not that's not the case and we got to grind those things out but uh just his attitude his mindset his work ethic has just been just unreachable and that's why he's maximizing his ability and i think a lot of people can do that it's just the dedication and discipline to to do it so to see him doing it is pretty pretty great I got some uh, Cam Ward numbers for you. 72% uh, uh, completion percentage, nine touchdowns, no interceptions. One of four quarterbacks in the country with nine touchdowns, or at least nine touchdowns and no interceptions, which is all great. But I'm also curious, like, one, one what you've seen out of him total so far, but also for him to get the rest he's had, you know, with the CSU game and the game on Saturday. Like, what impact on his game has that had for him? Well, I think every week is an, he takes his game to another level and breeds another layer of confidence. And it just shows, you know, why we made a lot of these changes, why we, you know, work so hard in the spring. And, and Coach Arbuckle has worked with him on his reads and progression. And there's still room for improvement. I think that's the great part. You see all the successes, yet he's never satisfied. Yet we, we point out and he takes constructive criticism really well on ways that he can get better. So... It's one of those things as a coach, I think it, it makes it pretty special and I'm not aware of all those stats, but I know he's made great decisions with the ball. And really about halfway last year, if you take after that Cal game last year, been really happy with his decision-making processes as he's went as far as throwing. And, you know, sometimes that's the bounce of the ball. I mean, they had their hand on one down the seam they probably could have had as an interception. But uh, like I said, he craves coaching and wants to keep getting better. I mean, going into the uh, Wisconsin game, you saw that as a pretty big opportunity. I mean, you know, top 25T, non-conference power five, all that. This week, with Oregon State coming to town, do you see that as like a similarly big opportunity, like in the same way? Or like what's kind of the outlook in terms of, of that with that game? One thing, first off, I just have a tremendous respect for Coach Smith and what he's done with their program. And I've, I said this last year, he's, he's three years ahead of us in building a program and that's where you want to be when you're in year five. I don't know where he's at, but that's that's where you want to be when you're in the same spot, same coaches, same scheme. You know, and you look at these guys as a whole. I mean, what an opportunity for us. Uh, by most metrics, they have a top five offensive line in the country. I was mistaken uh, about Wisconsin's backs. These two backs are phenomenal. I mean, just physical and run their scheme and they're patient. Um, 
very multiple number seven as a threat. And now they have a quarterback that's seen everything and extremely confident to make all the throws. Put that all together with in the last 15 games, they've had the number one defense in the conference. You know, so the challenge is there. The challenge is real. And I think we know and acknowledge that. And we have to play a certain way. And I think they're, if you say old school under center, running zone is old school now, I guess. Um, but there's a physicality they bring to both sides of the football on the line of scrimmage. And we got to match it. Our strain, our finish, our pad level when we're tired will lead to success. And that is like old school toughness. And we have it too. Right, so that's what you're going to see on Saturday, and who goes out there and does it for the course of 60 minutes is going to be really important. So what an opportunity! I know um, there's a lot of things that on paper look great, and national TV looks great, but this thing is going to be a physical, dominating line of scrimmage performance that you need to go out there and get. Uh, a few injuries to ask you about: uh, No Essa, No Javen the other day. How are they doing? And then. Uh, uh, with Ahmad coming back, is he going to have like a bigger role coming up now that he has played or just kind of wondering how he's, how he's doing? Well, I think, you know, just like every week, I, I meet with athletic training right after this meeting. So we feel pretty confident that Essa and Javen will be back. Uh, we have to have a great week of practice. Uh, Moku, we've always been kind of targeting this. I think that'll be important to get him back out there. And, and once again, when guys get healthy, you got to play yourself back into a role. And that'll be with Ahmad, and that's what he's working towards. Um, Coach, so you talk about the defense and we talk about the offensive line. Just wondering um, in terms of their pass rush containing that, obviously they had six sacks last year against you guys, 12 sacks through the first three weeks of the season. Just how you feel about your offensive line um, with some of the health issues, but you talked about the depth. How you feel about that group? Their defensive line's a problem and it's the strength of their defense and they're attacking and they do it in multiple different ways. A lot of line games, movements, I think they're very athletic and they play within themselves with power. And we got to match that. We're a different offensive line than we were uh, against them last year. I think Falili was making his first start of his career, maybe. We had some injuries where we were moving some guys around. Uh, but you look at the tape, I thought they were dominant last year. And we've watched the same tape. So our guys got to be prepared. They understand what it takes. Uh, we got to get by guys back from, from injuries and those things. But we also have. A lot of guys like Brock Dew has come in and really provided us with a lift and challenged and competed, right? And that makes Make better. And, and Christian has to continue to get better. Like, there's just a lot of things that is exciting from my seat to know that we have taken a step forward. And now that you're playing similar competition, I think it really shows that we've gotten better and we got to go out there and do it. So for us to be successful, I mean, it's going to be grinding out the run game. I mean, they're really good at the run game, you know, and then finding ways to keep Cam upright so he can go through his progressions and we can get the ball out in space. And then it feels like this year going into this week is very similar to last year in terms of the big win over Wisconsin, 3-0. and You go into conference play against the highly ranked team. Just what this year maybe is different in terms of the mentality or how you're going into this compared to last year? I don't think anytime you go through a situation, and I think you're alluding to the Oregon game, you just you learn and grow. And I think we got a bunch of guys and competitors that know what the moment is, doesn't want this to be the peak of it, and want us to be another step, you know, in our journey. So we got a lot of competitors. We've grown through some of the adversities of the past, and we had a lot of games and opportunities last year that we just didn't quite get over the hump. And you know, um, this is where we want it to be. This is what we've achieved so far. We should be very proud of that. We worked hard for it, but going forward every week is going to be a unique challenge, and this is one of those opportunities. Uh, Jake, uh, <clears throat> I'm interested from your perspective. With everything that's gone on this season with the conference and all that, and now it's you two remaining and both in the top 25 here in this matchup, does it take on any extra significance for either of your programs? No, I, I don't know what Coach Smith would say, but I would imagine he'd be the same way. We're just focused on what we need to do right now. I think it's great. I think it shows to the level of what, A, they've been building their program to and the success that we've had the last five years. You know, I think we've been ranked multiple times in that span, um, you know, since 19 and before and 17, all those things. So I just, it just so shows the quality of football both programs have been playing. And to do it at the same time, 
you know, we hope we both hope to be here, to be 3-0 and at this point, to have a great game in Giza Field. The best part of this is home. The electric is, the environment is going to be electric when we come out of that tunnel again, and we're going to need every Coug uh, to be involved heavily in this football game. So I know nationally, you know, we're together and we're going to be rebuilding the Pac-12 and all those things, but on the field, it's not going to be that friendly. I mean, it's going to be aggressive. It's going to be physical. It's They want to win. We want to win. And we know how important it is to get that 1-0 and and get conference slate of games started off for the right way. So it's going to be two teams competing their tails off against one another. That's what you're going to see. Um, and building off, you were talking about the Wisconsin matchup with the running. Obviously, Oregon State's team likes to run. Um, and we know how strong your team is against the run. Um, I guess just is, do you see this as a matchup of strength against strength and will there have to be adjustments made on both sides? Well, I think one thing people don't give them enough credit for is A, I mean, they're physical off the ball, but they are running off the ball. And, but yet they're really good in the play action pass game. I mean, last year we got beat on old school zone and zone boot. I mean, it was incredible, uh, just kind of the way they got us and we, we didn't do a good enough job, you know, from my seat adjusting quick enough to, to handle some of those things. So it is strength on strength. You do have to try to get them behind the chains. A, they don't really turn the ball over. Uh, B, they're always ahead of the sticks and getting themselves in great situations. And they're just like a missing one gap from hitting the big run. And their screen game on the perimeter has been phenomenal. They broke the game open last week getting the ball to number seven. And I, don't, I had to check the TV copy to see if the, the tape was sped up. That's how fast that dude was running. So they'll beat you in multiple different ways. So we just got to be really, really sound. And, uh, you know, but it will be one in the trenches. I, I was going to that was gonna be my next question. If, what do you think the key to this game is? Is it yeah, all I mean, up front? I, yeah, I, I think it is on both sides of the ball. I think that, that's where it is strength. And we need to make it our strength. Because I do think we have other strengths. But I think we can, on both sides of the ball, be efficient, effective, and dominant at the line of scrimmage. That's what, that's what it takes in this league. You know, make no mistake about the high-flying offenses. Like, you got to be good at the line of scrimmage. And that's what it's going to take for 60 minutes. Not, not a half, not three quarters, all 60 minutes uh, of tough Cougar football. Jake, is there, uh, is, is, you talked about having to be physical this week. Is there anything you can do in practice, or is that more of mental preparation, guys knowing, okay, we have to be more physical this week? I think the biggest thing after three weeks as a staff, we come together and, you know, we do these exercises. What do we need to stop doing? What do we need to start doing? What do we need to continue doing? And something we came across as a staff is that we just, we need to be better at straining and finishing. And that's got to be in practice. That's a habit thing, right? And that, that's on me. You know, if our guys aren't straining the finish, that's on me. And we got to hold them to that standard. And there's just little things as we've gone throughout the film that we've showed our guys, and I feel like we got mature competitors. So when they see it, they see, ah, I can do this better. I can finish that block. Hey, I'm peaking and getting high in defensive tackle, trying to make more plays versus staying in my gap. So just some of those – physicality isn't just, like, physical running into each other. It is playing with pad level. It's doing your job. It's just making sure you're trusting that everyone's going to do their part in that piece of it so it all comes together as one. I piggyback on Travis's question, and mine was, do you find it ironic that you open up Pac-12 play with the one team that you're still hooked to? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. You know, the schedule comes out a long, long time ago before all this happened. We were playing them, so it's not like we reshuffled this thing. You know, so yes and no. I, I think it's, it is a great storyline. I think once again, the spotlight will be on Pullman, Washington. Uh, so what an opportunity for Cougs everywhere, just like I felt in, in the Wisconsin game, to prove who we are again on a national stage against a faceless opponent, and it's about what we do. What an opportunity. And that's the way our players look at it. We've worked hard for this. I think you create your own opportunities. And obviously, as you go throughout the season, perceptionally, they, come bi you know, they, they become bigger games. Perceptionally, the more you win. But you earn those things. You know, do we talk about this if both teams are 0-3? You know, you don't. So I think we've earned this stage, and I think it's going to be exciting uh, brand of football. You, um, I asked you the question before the first game, if you could tell there's a difference with your team just by observing. Is there a difference now? It's conference season. Can you see there's a difference? Or is it, is it now you're into the rhythm of the week and, and it's trying to do the same thing at the same time every week? Well, I think as coaches, the biggest thing is we want to do is show consistency. 
you know, I think every player is going to come to this afternoon's meeting when we introduce the next opponent. They understand. They know what we're talking about. We talked about it right after the game. We're starting conference play and what that means. But at the end of the day, the, the journey doesn't matter if you're not focused on the present. And you got to stack up a bunch of one and O's when you get to conference play. And that's the opportunity that we have this week. But it doesn't matter. It's going to be challenging every week. And Oregon State's this opponent, and that's the target. And, and we got to work hard to get this one. Coach, you mentioned the offensive line and how the last time you played these guys, it was Lee's first start. I mean, you just went through a game where not only did your quarterbacks not get sacked, they didn't get hit. The, there were plays where Cam's standing flat-footed. He has so much time. I mean, what do you think that speaks to, and not just the way Coach McGuire has developed them, but the way they've uh, upped their own game, the way they've kind of pushed themselves to reach this new level? I'm proud of our offensive line because I think if you know any about, anything about it, and, and Jamie, you've been at practice, it's not easy. It's not easy. And... There's only one way to get better. You know, you don't get better at that position by taking it easy on them. You know, you really got to work hard. And But as an offensive lineman, you got to love that. There's a mentality piece to playing that position that is just different. And, you know, there's a grind to it. We talked about the development, put them in a slow cooker. And, you know, Coach McGuire knew the challenge when we came back. I said, we're not where we want to be. And we need to go out there and do it together. We have some great pieces, and let's just keep enhancing it as we go. So we're still in that process. And each week will be another step that I think we can take to just showing, you know, that, that we are better. You know, because the one thing, you know, UNC did was they were going to drop eight. So we had that time. Oregon State's not going to do that. They're aggressive. They're fast. They're going to bring tons of pressures and challenging looks uh, to test our rules and principles. And we got to hold up, and I believe we can. Just kind of quickly on that, I noticed Grant Stevens was, was on the Northern Colorado yeah. side. Is he coaching there? Yeah, he lost 55 pounds. I was like, I was like Grant, you look great. Um, he's a GA in their uh, academic services, and I just told him how proud I was of him. Uh, just what an ambassador for Washington State in the short time he was here. Reminds me a little bit of Gardner Minshew in the fact he just beams being a Coug, and he loves it, and he's just so appreciative to the opportunity and the experience. So uh, I told him, just like all those other guys, you give me a call, you know, if you never need any help and uh, want to hire him back someday if, if that's the progress he wants to take. So really proud of Grant. And I'm like, dang, man, you look like a linebacker. It looks good. You know, you always you got a lot of the freshmen in, in, in the second half and as the game kind of tailed away. But, um, you know, you talked about Isaac was going to play. Saw Khalil in there for a pretty good uh, yeah. section of that first mm -hmm. half. I mean, you've talked about him as a guy who's yeah. going to get some reps. I mean, how much do you think maybe now, especially against a team that wants to run the ball, you need that extra body, especially a guy with maybe a little extra juice in his step because he's young. Yeah, the best part is we're going to challenge him, and if he's ready to play, we're going to play him. Uh, he went out there, and he was one of our, you know, we have a defensive player of the game, but we also have guys that played their best, and he was on that list. Uh, every opportunity he gets, he takes advantage of. So once again, he's going to challenge those guys in front of him, and that's that's real life. That's how things work. So excited about him, and, and if he's ready to play and he's one of the best, 11, he'll be out there. Any uh, big changes to the uh, depth chart this week? No big changes to the depth chart. I, we're hoping to get everybody back and be healthy, and we feel like, you know, just like anything else, after three games, injuries can come and go, and we're not, uh, you know, pr you know, obviously we feel like we're in really good shape. I know you said during the week last week that between – uh, Isaac Terrell and Ram and uh, Edson, you know, that was going to be kind of an important test for those guys to see who can earn a bigger role. What did you see out of those guys and uh, what can we expect among, you know, among those guys? Well, I think Ram, you know, mostly comes in a lot of our pass rush scenarios and we got to just get him loose. I think sometimes he, you know, thinks a little bit too much out there and he's just blessed with such God given ability. Just go rush, just go rush. And Eddie is just. Just one of those steady guys. I mean, effort, toughness, hands, determination, grit. He just adds it. And, uh, you know, Isaac is just, just a puppy getting his feet wet but plays a certain way that you just love. So the more reps we give him, the better he'll get. And all three of those guys are going to play a big role. And they got to play physical because uh, Oregon State's tight ends can move some people. I know more will be revealed, obviously, throughout the week as you get ready for the game. But just early impressions on a guy that you kind of mentioned earlier and DJ Yui Angalale for Oregon State, obviously really big, can run the ball over 500 rushing yards last week. And just your kind of thoughts on him. He had 500 rushing yards last week? Yeah, oh, last year. Okay, okay, okay. I was like, dang. I was like, that's not good. I was like, that's not good. Um, I thought I was going to say, I missed that. I missed that. 
Um, well, I meant what I said. A uh, when you have a quarterback that you feel really confident in, he raises the level of everybody else around him, and you can see him making all the big throws. Really great touch passer, and then they use him in the old jackhammer package where he can run. I'm glad that guy's not here. I'm glad he's gone. Okay, I am. He's incredible. Um, but they still have that package and utilize his skill set in a lot of different ways. So um, they're very versatile, but you can see the confidence uh, that he brings to that team. And just, just like Cam brought to us, when you feel really good about that quarterback position, you feel really good like your opportunity to win games. Coach uh, Bender and Coach Welch. Do you know those guys? Does that ring a bell? Does not. Okay, so 115 years ago or more, those are the last two Cougar coaches to go 3-0 and in their first two years. You are the third. Really? What Did not that? know I, that. Yeah, I, okay. Did not know that. I, I'm disappointed, but I'm okay because I yeah. mean, you're, you're working hard still. Bill, where are we at on that one? You're supposed to prep me for these things. Huh? <laughs> just, yeah. just having gone 3-0. and yeah. For the first time. I mean, you're only the third Cougar coach. You look at some of the coaches who have been here before. I mean, Coach Price was here, got him to two yeah. Rose Bowls. Coach, you know, uh, you know, uh, Coach Leach. Just what does that mean to you to be able to get your team off to that start that coaches simply haven't been able to do here before? Yeah, especially with, you know, I think challenging non-conference schedules a little bit. I, I don't know if I look at it in the same light you do uh, right now, but I think it's something that we emphasize, something that we talk about getting off to fast starts is something that's a big part of our program, and, and it matters. And now I just want to make sure that springboards us into something else. You know, I don't, I, that is a team accomplishment. You know, I don't, less to say about me and more to say about our players and the coaching staff and how they've attacked each and every week because it's all three have been unique challenges, right? So. I'm just happy that I feel like we're really battle tested going into this game. That that's probably the biggest stance that I take from three wins is that, you know, we are battle tested and we're ready for this next test. How's uh, Nakia doing? I think Nakia's gonna be just fine. You know, I, I really do. I think it was just he's had a little bit of an ankle deal as we've kind of went through fall camp, and I think he just kind of tweaked it a little bit as he was finishing that deal and. Uh, I said, just took him out precautionary wise, and, and he'll be ready to go. Going back to some of those like early 1900s days, like he was talking about, you guys, I mean, they would play teams like the Spokane YMCA at like Lewiston High School. Are you like familiar with those like days at all, or like how much of this is news to you? That that's news. I, I have all the helmets in my office up at the top, and those ones without a face mask. I, those, those are some generational people. I, anytime I have a football alumni, I have them pick out what helmet they they were a part of. So. Um, that must be the coaches he mentioned must be on that far upper left corner without those face masks on. So that's when the game was the game. You're not wearing a face mask. You're, you're, you're pretty tough. And every once in a while I grabbed those things and there wasn't much protection out there. So, um, yeah, we've come a long way as a program. We're, we're proud of our history and we're excited about protecting that on Saturday. All right, go Cougs. Thank you guys.